Dear brothers and sisters, <clears throat> we are today celebrating two different feasts. Today begins the fourth feast of the Theophany, or the baptism of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And also we commemorate today, prayerfully, the holy, venerable Seraphim of Sarov. That's why the altar service today are wearing green instead of white. All the altar coverings are white. Today we're wearing green, usually on feast days of the monastics, the venerable ones, we wear green. Today's first gospel reading, we heard the opening verses of St. Mark's gospel and how the Lord prepared for his coming into this world. We heard about St. John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness. And he was preaching repentance. In Matthew's Gospel and in Luke's Gospel, when we read about St. John, we hear him saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The preaching of St. John to prepare the people was focused on repentance. Even our Lord himself began his ministry, as we read later on in St. Mark's Gospel, when he says, repent and believe in the Gospel. St. Theophan the Recluse, in offering commentary on today's Gospel reading, says that this preparation naturally entails repentance. He says, repentance in some ways gives birth to faith. And it is repentance coupled with faith that guide the person along the path to salvation. He says a person who has faith but without repentance is like a branch that is alive but does not blossom. Faith becomes alive through repentance, he says. <clears throat> Historically speaking, when we think about these opening pages of St. Mark's Gospel, we say to ourselves, well, of course, the people weren't prepared for the coming of the Messiah. The people were living in the shades and shadows of sin, of ignorance, of empty and hatred toward God. They had forsaken God's commandments. They have forgotten about righteousness. They have lived their lives according to their own desires. Of course, St. John the Baptist would talk about repentance. But we, brothers and sisters, namely on this Sunday before the great feast of Theophany, read today's Gospel reading because it applies to us as well. For us to bring forth fruit of our faith, we always have to be repentant. And what are we repentant of? What are we sorrowing over? Naturally, we sorrow over our sins, over all the failings in our life. We look at our, at our own life and we compare it to people like Saint Seraphim. We look at our own life and we, we see how we fall short in terms of prayerfulness. Saint Seraphim prayed constantly. He took upon himself great feats of asceticism. He lived in the wilderness all by himself for 15 years in order to grow in prayerfulness. He prayed on a rock for a thousand days and a thousand nights. In fact, many of us, if not all of us, have at least one time seen an icon of Saint Seraphim kneeling on a large rock. 
Saint Seraphim exercised great restraint and mercy and long suffering when three robbers came to him in the wilderness and beat him almost to the point of death and he was bigger than they were, he was stronger than they were, and he had an axe in his hand. He laid down the axe and he said, do what you want. He refused to live by the sword because he remembered the words of our Lord when he says, those who live by the sword die by the sword. We look at his life and we see indeed how much we need to strive more. And we are inspired. We are inspired today by the words of St. Paul in his epistle to the Galatians, the second epistle reading that was read today in church. St. Paul writes, Brethren, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We ask ourselves, brothers and sisters, do we bring fruit of the Spirit? Is our faith blossoming and increasing in love? Do we show love to everyone in joy? Do we always have the joy of salvation in our hearts? Or are we frequently weighed down by the cares and stress of this life? Peace. Do we truly have peace? Or are we quick to anger? Are we quick to judge? Are we holding on long to resentments? Long-suffering. Do we indeed endeavor and strive to persevere in all kinds of difficulties, trusting in God's mercy? Kindness. Do we show kindness and gentleness to others? <coughs> Goodness. Do we wish good things upon others? Are we thankful to God when we see others likewise receive blessings? Or do we sometimes become jealous and grumble that we don't have the things that others around us have? Faithfulness. Faithfulness is, is complete submission to God's will. Faithfulness is complete trust. Faithfulness is adherence to God's commandments, striving to search out and to follow His will. gentleness and self-control. How often, brothers and sisters, we find our thoughts running away with ourselves. How often do we, do we have trouble controlling our tongue? How often do we regret at what we say or even what we think? <clears throat> we read today's Epistle, brothers and sisters, not, not to make us, not to condemn us, but we read today's epistle reading to enliven in us a deeper and more profound sense of repentance. You know, the Holy Orthodox Church, especially the Russian Church, preaches very strongly about the benefits and the necessity of frequent and regular confession. It's not a formality. It's not something by which we control who comes to communion. But it is an expression of the words of Saint Theophon the Recluse today. That faith becomes alive through repentance. Even the words of Christ himself when he says, Repent and believe in the gospel. That for us to truly believe, for us to truly bring forth fruits of our faith, it is all preceded by repentance, by a sincere desire to change, by a realization and an acknowledgement that we have fallen short, that we have shortcomings, 
that we have transgressions, that we have things that we need to change in our life. All these things prevent us from realizing God's blessings and grace. How often, brothers and sisters, we find it so difficult to pray. We, we, we fall down on our knees, we beg from the bottom of our souls, and we don't hear anything. How often, brothers and sisters, that we are filled with so much stress and so many cares and struggles of this life, Sometimes resentment, sometimes anger, sometimes impatience, many things get in our way from actually hearing God's voice. God is not silent. God does not forsake us. He does not forget us. But He speaks to us in a quiet voice. And the craziness of this life and all the baggage that we have prevent us from hearing that voice. And then we struggle in life feeling lost, feeling as though God has forgotten us. It's just that we don't hear God trying to speak to us because we have too many things in the way. So today's gospel reading, brothers and sisters, about the importance of repentance in order to prepare to receive the blessing of God hits home with us as well. Let us, brothers and sisters, always keep this in our, in our thoughts. Let us strive to come to confession on a regular basis. Let us fall down on our knees at the close of every day and ask God to forgive us our sins and to thank Him for the blessings that He has bestowed upon us. Let us strive to also bring into fruition all the things of the Epistle to the Galatians of St. Paul, of love and joy and peace and faithfulness and self-control, gentleness. Let us strive to embody these things in our life. For in the coming days, we are about to celebrate a great feast, the Theophany, the manifestation of God, the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us, brothers and sisters, Remember Christ's words for us to repent and to believe. And when we change our life, when we live our life according to our faith, then we can hear God's quiet voice. We can receive His blessings. We can be given all that we need to bring forth all the virtues that we are called upon to bring forth in this life. May God help us. May He send down His Spirit to enliven us. May He warm our hearts. May He calm our souls. May He direct our thoughts. May He enliven all of us to live His Word so that we can truly live according to our faith and bring forth all the blessings, all the virtues, of meekness and goodness and gentleness so that those around us can see our children can grow in faith and we too as Saint Theophan the Recluse reminds us can walk along the path of repentance being accompanied by repentance and faith. Amen.